Hello and welcome to Artistic PCB Design for Terrified Beginners. I'm Clement and I do electronics for a living and also for fun. And I like cats and I sometimes hang out at hacker events and teach workshops, teach people to build things. And today you are these people. So this is me, this is one of my boards. And this is our cat who you'll be seeing more of later. So I'm targeting mainly two groups of people and I want to get them talking to each other. So I'm targeting artists who want to use circuit boards as a medium. And I'm targeting circuit board people who want pretty boards. Um, so the, the idea here is to get these two groups to speak a common language so that um, artists and designers who are designing things for this medium um, know what is possible and how, how they need to prepare their work so that it's useful for PCB designers. And PCB designers know how to deal with these weird graphics things that, that designers and artists like to throw at them. And of course, you don't have to be in either of these, group, uh, these groups if you if you just want to like make something cool, have fun. This is great. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what printed circuit boards are. And then we're going to look at what they're made of and what we can do with each of the elements that circuit boards are made of. And then we're going to take a really simple uh, bit of electronics, pretty much the simplest thing you can have. And then we're going to turn it into something that is visually much more complex than it is electronically. And then we're going to do the same thing again using a different method. And then um, you're going to have a try for yourself and I'm going to be there to help you. Circuit boards, printed circuit boards, PCBs. I'm sure you've seen some of these before. These are two of mine. You may have seen these particular ones before, in fact. Uh, so let's let's look at what they're made of. So your, your default printed circuit board has a fiberglass core. Now this is this is what it looked like from above and this is what it looks like from the side. So you have a thin sheet of fiberglass. And usually it's 1.6 millimeters. I don't know what that is in non-metric, you have to figure it out yourself. Um, yeah, so usually your board thickness is 1.6 millimeters. You can have a different thickness, you just need to tell your manufacturer that. Okay, so the fiberglass is covered in copper on both sides. So you have um, you have a really thin film of copper. And you don't normally see this uh, this copper surface because it's covered. Uh, it's covered in other materials. But like underneath there, the metallic bits on the PCB, underneath they're copper. <coughs> yeah, then this copper has a pattern. And this pattern is um, a very much interest to the people who are actually making the electronics work. But like we're going to look at it basically as um, a way to get our PCBs to look a particular way. So we have the copper pattern, and that's covered in solder mask. Now, solder mask is a um, basically a kind of paint. So it's um, it's a really thin film that covers the, the circuit board, and it repels solder. So solder doesn't like to stick to solder mask. And traditionally, it's green. So you've seen all these green PCBs everywhere. That's uh, that's the default color for PCBs is green. Um, but it doesn't have to be. So like solder masks can be a number of colors. Each manufacturer has a set of colors that they can use for solder masks. Um, and uh, then we have the pattern in the solder mask. And uh, the pattern in the solder mask is just there are bits on the board that have no solder mask. And we can define that when we design the board. We can define, okay, this bit should have no solder mask, this bit should have no solder mask. Um, then we have holes. And there are two types of holes on, on the board. So you have holes that are not connected to any copper, like this one here. So that's a hole that just goes retro. And then you have vias. And vias are a hole that has metal walls. And it's electrically connected to the top and bottom. So it can connect the top layer to the bottom layer. And then we have the surface treatment. Uh, so every bit of exposed copper gets covered with a particular surface material. And this is because if you leave copper exposed, it will oxidize very quickly, and then you won't be able to solder to it. So you have um, you have two main types of surface treatment. So you have uh, hot air solder leveling, and you have uh, ENIG. ENIG stands for electroless nickel immersion gold. So hot air solder leveling is just you dip the entire board in solder, and then you use a jet of hot air to just uh, spray it off the surface so that the, the, the surface remains relatively level. So you get uh, you get all the exposed copper stuff, the color of solder. And then ENIG 
actually all you need to know about the is the last bit which is gold so you, you get a really thin layer of gold that that covers the surface of the board so you you get this this gold surface everywhere where you have exposed copper so everywhere where you have copper underneath and no mask on top so like here you don't get you don't get gold over here you do get gold over here because you have exposed copper no mask right then we have silk screen and silk screen it's not actually made by a silk screen process anymore but it used to be so it's uh, basically just the sort of thing a sort of paint that's printed on top of the board and it's printed on top of the solder mask so if you have a bit with no solder mask you don't get silk screen there either you can't put silk screen elements on there and then you have milling this is milling is not actually a part of the pcb but it's a part of the pcb production process so you have uh, the board gets cut into a shape that that you pretty fine okay so let's let's look at those things in visual terms so fiberglass is sort of brown beige translucent and wherever you have copper you have opaque an opaque material so it doesn't let light draw so then you have solder mask which is just paint in a particular color you can actually choose which color you want um, not not freely like there's um, there's a set of colors that each manufacturer will have um, and you can choose among those then you have mask pattern which is just no paint like all the bits where you put no paint that's that's your mask pattern so holes are holes uh, the surface is where you get shiny bits so if you have exposed copper somewhere you get this surface treatment you get this gold or uh, tin colored like silvery colored material um, and then where you have silk screen you get white paint basically um, if your uh, if your solder mask color is uh, very light like uh, you can get you can get white solder mask and then the silk screen will usually be black on top of that so that it's actually readable uh, but for most colors your your silk screen is going to be white and then milling is just the shape that you want your board to have and then one thing that we haven't talked about so far is parts so you have components you have electronic components that actually go on the board and get soldered on and they of course have a visual effect as well you can use those or you can hide them we'll, we'll get to that in a minute okay so let's look at these elements on an actual pcb so we have we, we don't have any exposed fiberglass here you can kind of see the fiberglass color in here between the between the actual boards uh, so here we have yeah, so here we have um, um, PCB with solder mask no copper and here we have copper on top of that and you can you can see patterns in the copper so these are called traces and here is a via so that's a hole that's connected to the copper here's some more of those here's a hole that's not connected to the copper then you have this gold gold covered here which is exposed copper so you have a hole in the mask and you have copper underneath so that's exposed copper um, and the white lines the white lines and text are your silk screen so here's what a board looks like after it's been assembled and you can see there's there's no solder on the pads that used to be gold and some of them are completely covered some of them are partially covered um, and you have all these components on there so what are the design elements that we can control so we can control the shape of the board we can control the pattern uh, that the copper has on both sides of the board we can control where the components go we can control where we have no solder mask so where we have no paint we can control where we have the white paint and we can sort of control color so we can we can choose the surface treatment we can choose whether we want the, the gold surface treatment which costs more money but also looks nicer or the hot air solder leveling which is uh, which is a much rougher surface but uh, silver colored so sometimes you want that effect and you can choose the color of your solder mask so let's look at a few things we can do with these design elements so we can do translucent areas with shadows by putting copper by putting holes in the copper we can do metallic shapes by uh, making a pattern in the mask over a copper surface. We can do painted shapes by, by using the, um, uh, the silk screen. That's usually 
lower precision than your solder mask. Uh, you can do shaped holes, you can do shapes in copper under the mask, which are a subtle sort of change in contrast. Then you can use the components as shapes themselves and you can shape the entire board. Now with shaped holes and the shape of the board, uh, there's, uh, there's one thing to be aware of. They're made with a milling bit. And a milling bit is like a drill that can travel around. So it's a circular thing, it's rotating. Which means you cannot have sharp inside corners. So like here you have the milling bit going around along this curve and it cannot make a sharp corner in here. And similarly it cannot make sharp corners in here. So on the outside you can have sharp corners if you need them because you can have the milling bit go like this and then like this and you're left with a corner. But uh, when, when you're on the inside of the board, when you're making a cutout inside the board, you cannot, uh, you cannot have sharp inside corners. So here's, here's an example of what we can make. So here, this is exposed fiberglass, and I'm using it as a light diffuser. So if you have a light behind there, it will get nicely diffused inside here, and then you have a really high contrast metallic text here. So this, this, uh, this text and this text here, they're made in uh, hot air solder leveling process. So this is exposed copper with solder on it. Here is a silk screen by comparison, and uh, here is a cut out in the copper and also mask removed in the same place so you get the bare PCB. But you can also see here how like if you have a backlit board how the traces actually look completely different where there is copper and where there isn't. Okay so here's something else we can do we can make patterns we can make we can put like pictures in the mask layer and then you get those in exposed copper. Uh, here's again copper under the mask uh, here you have um, a combination of exposed copper and silk screen. Yeah, this this is just an example of like boards can be any shape. They don't need to be rectangular. So like this is a board that is actually designed to bend. So this is the bendy bit here. It's actually designed to bend, and uh, you can you can use that you can use that shape. So here's another board uh, where we're combining uh, mask exposure and silk screen to get these sort of continuous lines that are changing color. Uh, this is the board I was showing you earlier. So here I have cutouts in the copper and in the mask layer, and on the that's on the back of the board. And I have an LED here, a light emitting diode, which illuminates in this direction. And this is the effect that you get when you look at it from the other side. So I have these lines on the front. So I have cutouts with lines in them on the front in the copper layer. On the back, I just have complete cutouts in in the copper and mask layer. And this is the effect you get. So the board elements we have, that these, these are the things that we control. So we have board, the board outline, the shape of the board, which is uh, basically a vector image. It's a, it's a path. So then we have the negative mask, so like the bits where we want mask removed, and we're going to be exporting these as raster images, and that shows up as either the surface, uh, the surface treatment, so that would be the gold or silver color, or as the fiberglass that is underneath, and that's depending on whether you have copper under this uh, this mask opening or not. Then you have silk screen, and silk screen is a positive raster graphic, so this is just uh, where where the silk screen goes. And then we have polygons which define where the copper goes, and we have polygons which define where the copper does not go. So, like we can make uh, we can make areas that are filled with copper, and we can make other areas inside those that are excluded, that have no copper. So, when we're working with ve with vector graphics, we can export vector graphics directly. So that's easy. Um, when we're working with photos, when we're working with raster graphics with with many colors then we need to map them onto layers. So we need each layer to be a binary image. So you, you cannot do transparency, you cannot do grayscale. Um, the only thing you can do is like, okay, this bit has has this, like is present on this layer or is not. So we're going to separate our fiberglass areas. We're going to um, separate the metallic areas into their own layers. And we're going to export those. We're going to do the same for silk screen. And for silk screen, you can, you can use uh, halftone 
to to convert um, uh, to convert grayscale to binary, or you can use thresholding. So I'm I'm going to show you both actually. If you if you use half tone too much, you you generate gigantic graphics, and gigantic graphics can crush your PCB manufacturer's website. This has happened. Okay, so here's the design process. Here's what we're going to do. So first of all, we're going to uh, decide how big the board is going to be, because that that de determines what resolution you want to export things in. Then we're going to draw the, the outline of the board, and export that. We're going to create any graphical elements we have, export that. Then we're going to import those into our board design software, and we're going to place components on the board and connect those components together, and then make sure it looks nice. And once we're happy, we're going to export it so that it can actually be manufactured. Okay, so um, there's a type of software which, if you're on the artist side of the divide, you've not experienced before necessarily. And this is an electronics computer-aided design software, ECAD, EDA, Electronics Design Automation. It has lots of names. Um, but like it, yeah, the names don't matter as much. Uh, what we actually care about is what what it does. So it deals with schematics, deals with layouts, and it deals with curvers. So a schematic is kind of like a flowchart of what is connected to what on the board. So you have what's on there, what components are on there, and how are they connected to each other. Then you have layout, which is what the board looks like. So you have uh, this is where you have all your design elements. You have you have your traces, you have your footprints. Footprints is the the copper. Uh, equivalent of a component, so like the the bit where the component goes, and we're going to have all our artistic elements on there as well, and then we have Gerber's and Gerber's. Uh, this is a historical file format which is uh, still in use, and it's great. It's uh, everything that the manufacturer of the board needs to know. So like regardless of what uh, design software you're using, that's that's what's going to come out, and that's what all the manufacturers understand. Okay, so here are the tools we'll be using. We'll be using Inkscape for vector graphics and for converting vector graphics to other formats. We're going to be using Krita for raster and vector graphics for halftone and for separating layers of different colors. If you want to use another graphics program, if you want to use GIMP, if you want to use Photoshop, if you want to use PaintShop Pro, whatever you like, that's fine. Uh, you have to figure out where the equivalent things are. But like this, this is this is what I'm familiar with. This is what I'll be showing you, and this is what I can actually help you with if you get stuck. Uh, so then we have KiCad for our actual PCB layout and schematics, and KiCad is awesome. You should you should definitely be using KiCad because it's uh, there's a few others uh, that are also not closed source crap and they're also wonderful. There's Libre PCB, there's Horizon, uh, but for those I don't have a good process yet for getting graphics into them. So I I, I work with KiCad. All the boards I saw you, I showed you before, with two exceptions, the most boring ones, were all made with KiCad. And that's again what I'm comfortable with using, and what what I can help you with. So this is our schematic. So what we're building is a so-called shitty add-on. And if you've been to various hacker events, uh, or particularly DefCon is very big on shitty add-ons. Uh, but like there's um, there's a whole lot of event badges that have this uh, four-pin or six-pin connector, where you can plug in random boards that do stuff. So uh, we, we're going to be making one of those. And all that we have here is one connector and two resistors and two LEDs. So basically, we're connecting this pin to these two resistors. Each of those resistors is connected to the LED, and the LED is connected to ground. And the only thing this will do is when you plug it into a compatible badge, those LEDs are going to light up. That's it. This is like the simplest possible electronic circuit. Okay, so let's make an actual board. So here is the schematic I was showing you earlier. So let's convert that to a PCB. So here we go, we can go view, 3D viewer, and here's the PCB. Now this is super, super boring. We can do better than that. So here's what we're gonna do. So I drew this picture of a cloud. You can see it's a cloud because it has someone else's computer on it. Right, and I, I want this picture, I want this black stuff that's here. I want that to show up in gold on the PCB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the mask layer so that the copper underneath shows up. So I need to put copper underneath, I need to put this picture on the mask layer. So another thing I want to do is I want this board to actually have the shape of this cloud. 
and I want it to be about three centimeters across. So we've got, um, I've actually scaled this so it's about three centimeters across. So you, you, can, you can do the scaling here already. You can set the units in here so that if you're, if you work in inches, you can, you can do that. And here it tells you how wide this thing is. Okay, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a path that goes around this whole cloud. So I'm going to use the path tool. Just gonna click around, around the whole thing, and this this is now not the ideal shape. So let me just uh, change the color to red so we can see it better. So I've switched to this edit paths my notes tool, and you can you can now see the path a bit. And you can see that first of all it's cutting into the shape, and second of all it's got sharp inside corners like these. And we can't have those because they, they can't be manufactured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this path out and round out these corners. So that looks pretty nice already. Yeah, so this is going to be our board shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select the black bit and delete it for a moment. <coughs> and I'm going to save a copy of this. I'm going to save a copy in this format. Desktop cutting plotter, AutoCAD, DXF, R14. Okay, save. And th these are the settings that you want to use. So then I'm going to do undo to undo the delete and I'm going to hide this and select this and export this as a PNG image. So I'm going to set this to 300 dpi, you want to remember this value, you're going to need it later. And I'm going to save this as cloud.png okay, and export. Okay, so now we have a DXF and the PNG. This is great. So over here, we're now going to import graphics. And we're going to import this cloud.dxf into layer edge cuts. And you can see this is now the right size because we exported it at the right size. So here we go. And if we go out tree again for our 3D viewer, we get the board that is the shape we want. This is great. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to convert that PNG into a mask layer. So we're going to go to the main KiCad program here and go over here where it says bitmap to component converter. So then we load the bitmap and we load our cloud.png and it says 300 dpi here, which is exactly what we want. But if you export it another resolution you can change that here or if you want to scale it if you want to make it smaller you can go 600 and then it's half the size you can see here so now 300 is fine we're going to use 300 we want it on solar mask and we want to see what it will look like this this looks fine so we're exporting it as a kicat footprint and now what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder that is called dot pretty so Let's say cloud.pretty. 
So create that, and then we have cloud.kcat mod. Okay, so we've got that in there. Now in here, we can go preferences, manage footprint libraries. And we go to project specific libraries, and we add an existing library. And there we go, cloud.pretty. So let's say that. And then we press the O button. And then we click. And there's our cloud. And we can put that in there. So now we have that picture inside our PCD. And this is now a cutout in the mask layer. And you can see here, you can see the bare PCB surface underneath. That's the fiberglass that you can see underneath. Now we actually wanted it gold, so what we're going to have to do is put some copper underneath. So let's take the Filled Zones tool over here and use that to fill the top layer, the front copper layer, with copper that is not connected to anything, so no net, no connection. And there we go. It doesn't matter what shape this is as long as it's, it's covering the whole board. And we go over here and there it is. Now when you make changes to a zone, um, or when you change anything that's inside one of those field zones, it's not going to automatically fix itself. It's not going to automatically recalculate. So you need to press the B button for it to recalculate. So for example, I'm going to move this connector here because it's kind of interfering with our lightning bolt. So I'm going to take this and press M, M for move, and I'm going to move that over here. Now, you see, it didn't actually recalculate the zone. So you press B, and it does that. Okay, so that's great. Now, I wanted to have some openings in these lighting bolts so I can see underneath, so you can see light coming through from the other side. So let's do that. Let's make a keep out area. That's going to keep the copper out. So we want copper out. Everything else is fine. On the front layer, we want copper to stay out. Don't worry about this morning. This is fine. Ignore the sound in the background. And you see it doesn't do anything until you press B. Now it recalculates and there you go. You can see you can see the uh, fiberglass underneath. So that's cool. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate it. So I just right click on that and pick duplicate. You can also do control D for duplicate or option D if you're on a Mac. And you can also edit the shape. So press B again, and there we go. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place our components. So we have here these LEDs, and we want them behind these lightning bolts. So I'm going to take this and M for move, F for flip, and R for rotate. So let's do that. That one goes there. Here's another one, M for move, F for flip, flip puts it on the other side of the board. So we flipped it from the front to the back, and R for rotate. So that goes over here. And then we have these resistors, and same thing. Now you see those white lines over there? Now you want those white lines to not cross as much as possible, because that will make cropping much easier in a minute. So we don't want those crossing. So we place the part so that See how that's crossed? You uncross it and you place the part. Okay, now we're going to connect those together. This is what it looks like now. So now we're going to connect those together. So we're going to use page down, page up and page down to switch between top and bottom layers. So we're working on the bottom layer. That's over here as well if you want to do it this way. Bottom layer. And then X for connection. So Click where you want to start, click where you want to end, just follow the white lines here. And this is why you don't want white lines crossing, because if you don't have any crossing lines, this is super easy. Okay, there we go. So that's everything connected, that's our electronics bit done. So it now looks like this. So you see those traces? They connect, they connect the parts together. Now this is a bit annoying, we have this little J1 over here that's sticking out. So we're going to hit escape to get out of the connection mode and then move that over here. Okay, so that's that's kind of nice. We can add a bit of embellishment to it. So let's add some holes. 
I'm using the via tool to add a bunch of holes. If you want a different size, you can edit the sizes here to add another size. So I'm looking for kind of hailstorm effect here. And let's add some lines as well. So on the front silk screen layer, you can actually draw right here. So you don't need to do this in Inkscape if you if you just have some simple graphics. So you, you click to start, you double click to end. And this is what that looks like. And you can also add other shapes. You can add some circles. And of course you can move them around and and change the size and whatever. Okay, so that's looking pretty nice. Over here it's still a bit boring, so let's let's add some more stuff there. So I'm gonna load some more bitmaps. So I got a snake in here. I want it a bit smaller. So you can see the size it's going to be over here. So I want oops. I want that on the silk screen. Now it says front silk screen here. We want it on the back. This is fine. You want to use front silk screen anyway. So we're going for snake. And I've just saved it to the same directory. And this is a bladder. And oh, and click snake. So now the snake is on the front silk screen, which is not where we want it. So let's take this snake again and flip it and put it on the back silk screen. And let's add another one. So now we have two snakes. And let's also add some bladder. Here's one bladder. Here's another bladder. So we have snakes and bladders. OK, so I think this, this board is pretty much done at this point. So let's export it for manufacturing. OK, so now we're going to call call the output directory Cloud Gerbers. And these are the settings you want to use. These are the ones. And uh, the reason you want to use these settings is that we these are the ones that are compatible with the largest number of PCB manufacturers. OK, so what we want to do is plot and then generate draw files, generate draw file, generate map file, close, close. OK, and that leaves us with this directory. So these are all the files that a PCB manufacturer needs to actually manufacture this board. So we can zip that up and send that to a manufacturer, and they'll be able to make this board. So that's it. OK, so let's do a slightly more complex board. So we're starting with the exact same board as before. The um, only difference we're going to make at this point is we're going to set its background color to black. OK, so this time I want to make a circuit board that looks like my cat. So I'm loading up Krita, which is an absolutely amazing graphics editor. But you feel free to use anything else you want. So this here is Zoe. That's, that's our cat. So what I want to do is I want to make a circuit board that looks like Zoe. So what I, what I want is I want the shape of the board to be the shape of her face. And I want these yellowy bits over here to be gold on the circuit board. And I want the eyes here, the yellowy bits of the eyes, to be, um, to be the fiberglass color, the beige color on the circuit board and to be translucent so we can backlight them. And for the rest of the board, I want these white lines here to be white 
uh, silk screen on black solder mask. And the fuzzy bits around the ears we're going to do in half tone. So there's a lot of techniques in here. Um, you don't have to use all of them. This is just a an example of like some of the most advanced things you can do. So the first thing I'm going to do is exactly as before. I'm going to use the Bezier curve tool over here to make a curve around her face. So we want a very thin line and we want it red because that's a good contrast color. Okay, so we've created a new vector layer. So let's call that outline just so we don't get confused later. So just like before, we're making an outline of this cat. And then I'm going to use this Edit Shapes tool to edit this outline. And this works exactly the same way as it did in Inkscape. So again, I don't want any sharp inside corners, and other than that, I wanted to follow the shape of this cat. Okay, so that's looking pretty reasonable. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this layer. So layer, export, save vector layer as SVG. And we're going to save that as catoutline.svg. And then I'm going to go over to Inkscape and open that file. So this is a bit weird over here. So looking at the size of this, we can see it is 384 millimeters in width, but we actually want it to be around five centimeters wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale that down until it is around what I want. Okay, so now it's about the right size. And I'm going to save a copy as catoutline.dxf. Okay, so now I can go into my circuit board and import graphics and pick catoutline.dxf. And there we go. We have a cat. So it's important to actually take a note of this number. So that's just over 50. So we're going to need this in a minute. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is, let me just fix that here as well. I'm going to convert this shape to a selection and then trim the image to that selection and then invert selection and delete everything. Oops, switch to the other layer and delete everything that's not part of that image. Now we don't need the outline anymore, so we can get rid of that. So there we go, a cat. Now what we want to do now is we want to remove all the bits that are going to be gold, and remove all the bits that are going to be fiberglass, and then uh, change the rest into a binary image, so just black and white, pixels, nothing else. And then export that, and then import it into silkscreen and into mask on our PCB. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the similar color selection tool. And you can adjust its fuzziness over here. So I want to select things that look like this yellow here. So, oh, I'm on the outline layer. Okay, so go back to this layer. I want to select things that look like that. Okay, so that's that's pretty promising already. So we have these areas over here and we have those areas over there. Now, 
this is a bit fuzzy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feather that selection just to smooth it out a bit. Okay, so now it's a bit smaller. So then I'm going to convert this selection to a vector selection. So right now the selection is it has transparency. So we don't want that. We want we want it to be a complete cover. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to convert the selection to a vector selection. And that removes those areas entirely. Okay, so before we do that, I want to add to the selection all these areas around the eyes. Because those are going to be fiberglass, so they need to be removed from the mask as well. So I'm going to add to the selection, and I'm going to use And also here you can adjust your fuzziness. Okay, so that's fine. And again, I'm going to convert vector selection and cut that out. So Control X to cut, and then Control V to paste. So now I have a separate layer, which is just this. Okay, we'll get to that layer in a minute. Let's work on this one now. So this layer is now almost black and white. So let's let's select everything. And now what we're going to do is we're going to desaturate. So we go filter, adjust, desaturate. And that takes all the colors out. Oh, we're on the wrong layer. Okay, so layer one, filter, adjust, desaturate. That takes all the color out. So the next thing I want to do is I want to convert everything that doesn't have high contrast in it. I want to convert to half tone. So I'm going to use this outline selection tool and I'm going to start here and select this region which has high contrast features. So like that, and then I'm going to invert selection, and then I'm going to go to artistic half tone. And that's the effect that gives us. Now I'm going to set it to 5, so that gives us a smaller grain size. once it's done doing its thing, you can see that now we have this halftone transform on all the low contrast stuff. Then I'm going to invert selection again, and now this area is selected, and over here I'm going to use a threshold. And that changes that entire region to just black and white. So you can set the threshold, find something that looks nice. That's probably too far. That's probably too far in the other direction. So we're just find to, trying to find a nice threshold here. Okay, so now the entire image consists of only two colors, black and white. So what we're going to do next is we're going to fill the entire background with black. So everything that's transparent, we're going to fill with black. So to do that, I'm going to use similar color selection tool on this transparent area and then flood fill, and flood fill set to fill entire selection, and set that to black. Okay, so now the only white bits we have are where we want our silk screen to be. Okay, then we're going to um, do a similar thing to this layer. That's our pasted layer. So we're going to use the similar color selection tool with very high fuzziness to basically select everything. So everything here is selected, and then flood fill that with black. 
then we're going to invert selection and filter the rest with white. And then we're going to select everything and invert it. So now we have white where we want mask openings, and here we have white where we want silk screen. This is great. So next thing we're going to do, select just this layer, and then export cat face mask. This is our mask layer. And then do the same for the silk screen layer. Now remember that number that we had in Inkscape, the 50.2? That's what we're going to need now. So we go to our bitmap to component converter, and then we load a bitmap, cat face silk. And we want this one to be negative. So uh, because our background is black and our foreground is white, we want to flip it around so it's negative. And then here it says this would be 384 millimeters wide. So let's set that to something else. So we want it to be 50.2 cat pretty and that's cat silk okay so remember the 551 we're gonna do the exact same thing with our mask so set that to mask and export cat mask then we go back to our circuit board and we go O and click Oh, and our cat's not there, so we go to Manage Footprint Libraries, Project Specific Libraries, Add Existing Library, Cat Pretty, try again, Cat. So, Cat Mask, Cat Silk. Let's go with Cat Mask first. This is going to take a while. So when you're doing 3D rendering with a high complexity, uh, with a high complexity graphics element, uh, it takes GigaCAD a long time to process it. So uh, our highest complexity graphics element is our silk screen. So we're going to add that last after we've done everything else. Okay. So we have fill zones, same as on the last board. Of that and there we go so that's that's that layer and over here we actually want to make an exclusion zone so we want no copper there so we're going to do a keep out zone keeps out the copper pores on the front layer and actually I'm going to make a an inside circle and an outside circle. So we actually get copper in between. and we're going to place our parts just like before
If you want to place a part diagonally, you can do that as well. You press E for properties, and then you can do stuff like this. And you can see even, even here it takes us a few seconds for the board to update. So then I'm going to add some mask openings to the back. Finally, we're going to add our silk screen. Okay, this is going to take a little bit to render. This is fine. So just as a reminder, going back through the steps, so we separated everything that was going to be going on the mask layer. So everything is going to be gold, everything is going to be fiberglass, we separated that all onto its own layer and turned it into a binary image, so black and white. Uh, we separated the outline and exported that via Inkscape and for this we selected a region where we use threshold and we selected another region where we used uh, half tone and that converted it to a black and white image. This is Zoe and I think it looks quite a bit like her. So what we're going to do is we're going to export this for manufacturing. So, here we go. Oh yeah, we should probably move that a little. Okay, so exporting for manufacture. We go to plot, we select this option, we deselect this option, select this option, deselect those two. We set the output directory to whatever we want, and then plot, and then Generate drill files, map file, drill file, close, close. And now we have everything we need to manufacture this board. Now, which for Drupal files is gigantic. Okay, so we're going to back this up. And here we are. This you can now send to a board manufacturer. So the last thing I want to show you is how to actually order some boards. So this is an XPCB. I'll show you a few different manufacturers. So here are our Gerber files that we generated earlier. we want 
want it in Enic and we want it in black and it tells you the price here and your shipping cost and it's a similar thing with PC UA So again, we can we can go here and get our Gerberas, and we want to change this to Immersion Gold, and the color to black. And then we have Eisler, and Eisler and Oshpark are nice because they actually read Kikat files directly, so you can go open the Kikat PCP file and just here you need to be careful if you want an egg you need to make sure to select this option and they have this lovely port preview here so you can actually see where where the milling paths go and all that Okay, then we have uh, Oshpark. And Oshpark also takes KiCat files, so we're going to use our cat this time. And it takes a while because it's a very graphically complicated PCB. And there it is. Yeah, they only do purple. Oh, that's that's not quite true. They also have a funky trans transparent uh, transparent solder mask. But as far as I know, that's that's all the colors they have. Okay, so that's how you get boards.